I would like to show you how I capture flat field frames. I start with my iMac and a convenient drawing program and then I create a large white rectangle which you can see here that's surrounded by black. The reason I want black around the rectangle is because I want to minimize the amount of light in the room because I don't want reflections to come off the camera and be seen in this sheet of plastic and I also uh, don't want any shadows. So normally I do this in a darkened room but for now I have the lights on so you can see the video. Now over top of the white rectangle I place this sheet of translucent white acrylic. I got this from a local plastic shop for a dollar. I need this acrylic to act as a diffuser because the viewing angle of the display is not wide enough uh, to work with the ultra wide angle lens. The lens sees way out into the, to the side to the corners and uh, with the bare display without this piece of plastic the corners are much darker than they should be. Uh, with this diffuser then I get a much more evenly illuminated frame. So what I do is I uh, set the focus, aperture, and ISO that I would use for taking my uh, pictures, uh, my pictures at night of the stars. And then I set the shutter speed so that I get a, a nice clean peak in the middle of the histogram. And I take 10 exposures held up really close to the uh, uh, screen here so I don't go off the side and uh, get the dark background. So I take 10 exposures really close here and then I put the lens cap on and I take 10 more exposures which I'll use when I'm processing my master flat frame. This is how I use Lightroom to prepare flat field frames for processing with Starry Landscape Stacker. Let's start by looking at the histogram for these flat field frames that I've just captured. You can see here that the uh, the histogram, all the information is concentrated in the middle. There's a good gap on the bright side and a good gap on the dark side. We could have gone with a very slightly longer exposure, maybe shift this a little bit to the right, but that's really not necessary. There's no risk here that we're clipping any information off on either the brights or the darks. Before we move on and process these images though, let's look at this image here. This image was captured without using the acrylic diffuser. And what you can see is the image is brighter in the middle and much darker in the corner. And that's because the uh, display, the viewing angle of the display is not wide enough to fill out the corners uh, of this with this lens, because this lens is very wide. It's an 11 millimeter lens on a full frame. You can see this same effect if you uh, stand beside your display and look at it. You'll see that when you're looking from the side, the display is much darker, and that's what's happening over here in the corner. Uh, when you're looking at it straight on, of course, it's just uh, fine. So this basically proves that when you're uh, using a very wide lens, you really do have to have uh, some sort of diffuser over top of the display. Its viewing angle simply isn't wide enough to work with a uh, very wide lens. There's also one little uh, interesting artifact you can see here, and that is that the uh, bright spot in the middle here is actually slightly oval in shape. And that's telling us that the viewing angle of the display is slightly wider side to side than it is top to bottom. So let's go back here to our images captured with a diffuser. And we know now that we absolutely do need that diffuser. What things are we going to do to this uh, to prepare it for processing with a uh, Starry Landscape Stacker? Well, the first thing we want to do is make sure that the white balance is the same across all the frames. I always shoot with auto white balance and it comes in looking like this as shot and uh, some settings that it, the camera has chosen. The problem is if I try and synchronize these white balance settings across all my flat field frames here and my dark frames, what it's going to be synchronizing is as shot. It won't be synchronizing these numbers. Uh, and if we go here to the dark frame, we'll see that it's as shot, but it's completely different numbers. So what we should do here is just change this to custom. And now when we synchronize across all the frames, uh, they will be synchronized to these numbers.
The next thing is contrast. I have been shooting all my frames, uh, sorry, I've been processing all my light frames with contrast set all the way down. And that's because the images that I'm capturing are very high contrast. The stars are very bright, the foregrounds tend to be dark. In order to give as much information as I can to Starry Landscape Stacker, I want to bring the contrast all the way down. And then after I've processed with Starry Landscape Stacker, I can adjust the contrast as necessary. So by, doing, by doing this, I'm giving as much information as possible to Starry Landscape Stacker, which is making my images, my final images, better. You might not want to bring it all the way down. That's fine. But whatever you do, the important thing here is that the contrast should be the same here as it is when you process your light frames. For me, that's easy all the way to the left, and it works just fine. There's one other thing to look at here is lens corrections. If you're going to remove chromatic aberrations in your uh, light frames, then you want to do that here. If not, then leave that off. I'm going to leave that off for now. I, I'm undecided whether I want to have that on or not. One thing you do not want to do is have uh, profile corrections enabled. Do not enable profile corrections if you're going to be uh, working with uh, flat field corrections. Uh, don't enable it here and don't enable it uh, when you're processing your light frames. So for me, what I'm left with is really only uh, two things. Making sure that my white balance is the same across all my frames and making sure that my contrast is the same as it is in the light frames that I will be processing. So now what I do is I just select all my uh, flat field frames here and I synchronize those. In this particular case I have 10 frames. Uh, that's enough for this demonstration, but in practice I, I'd like to use 20. That's a fine number. 10's enough, 20 is probably better. There's probably not a lot of point in going more than 20. I'm going to be synchronizing the white balance here uh, and the contrast. These other things are set. That's fine. I haven't changed them. Lens corrections, I haven't changed them, so it's fine to synchronize those. Hit synchronize. And now I also, of course, have some dark frames to go with these. I'm going to synchronize across those. Uh, again, the settings are fine. The number of dark frames should be approximately the same as the number of uh, flat field frames. It doesn't have to be identical, but making it the same is fine. And now I'm going to export, oops, let me select this guy, and then I'm going to export my uh, dark frames and my flat field frames. I'll put them in a directory and uh, in that directory, I will use Starry Landscape Stacker to make a master flat field frame. And that master flat field frame can then be used with any image shot with this camera, this ISO, this lens, and this aperture. So that, for me, is uh, an awful lot of images. That's most of my images. So this master flat field frame that I'm going to make, I will be able to apply to a large number of images. So let me do my export here, and when it's done, we can uh, go and see how it's going to work in Starry Landscape Stacker. So now I have my 10 dark frames and my 10 flat field frames as TIFF files, and I'll open those in Starry Landscape Stacker. It's opening 20 images. And it's recognized that it has 10 flat field frames and 10 dark frames, so it will process them. And it's done. Uh, when I save this file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the camera this was done with, the lens and the focal length, the aperture, and the ISO. Because this is a master flat field frame that can be applied to any image that is captured with this camera, lens, aperture, and ISO. If I do any captures with other settings, then I have to uh, make a new flat field frame, or master flat field frame. What I should do here is I also should note that this has uh, no lens corrections. And I can save that, and I'm done.